Well, good morning. It's 6.15 on the 29th of April. It's 31 degrees out. It's a Saturday. <clears throat> Looks like it's going to be a nice day. Sunrise was at 524. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, in spite of the squirrel. Come on, bud. Fun. Yeah, Flynn woke me up at uh, 5.40. And I proceeded to roll over. Didn't want to get up, but... Then Rita got up. <clears throat> so, I figured it must be, must be time to get up. So, here we are. Headed down to Brewer today. So we'll be all dinner and awards. And I understand that the Quad County Snowmobile Club is going to get an award. <clears throat> so Rita and myself, Kevin O'Brien, and uh, Cheryl Cromer, Cheryl Files Cromer. Well, we're gonna head down there. Don't know how long it's gonna take. Well, I know it's an hour and a half to get to the brewer. Come on, bud, let's go. And <clears throat> I don't know how long the uh, the dinner's gonna be, or how long the. Uh, awards are going to be. <coughs> oh boy. It was a beautiful day yesterday. Sunshine and 60 degree weather. I was able to uh, get the chipper out, drag it up with the John Deere. Well, I didn't drag it up. I think it's designed to go on the, on the road. It's got DOT approved tires up to 45 miles an hour. So, towed it up to the uh, pile I had made of alders, chipped those up, and then uh, there. There were a bunch of dead pine branches I had cut off. Two large pine trees. Clear, uh, clear them out to, from the ground level up to approximately six feet. And uh, I had to carry those out of the woods. Made a pile of that. Uh, and chip that up. He found that pile of scat. He's been running whoever it was that left it there. It's his territory. <coughs> Pine branches. And apple branches are a pain in the ass to, to chip up. <clears throat> so while I was chipping that up, I noticed there was a, an alder here that's always a pain in the ass to go around when I'm mowing. So I cut that up. <clears throat> I 
I don't think I took a video of the pile of stuff I had to ship, but you can see. I got a good pile of mulch. It's not a big pile. I mean, last year I had a huge pile, but I'll have to let that dry out a little bit and scoop it up put it in the areas I want it, but right there is where the old one was. Uh, let's go down here a little bit. You can actually see some, some chippings in the road. <coughs> you can see the pine tree in there, and the one to the right of it. Then I pruned up the apple tree there. I had a bunch of branches low on the ground that would uh, hit you in the face when you're going by with the mower. Huh. This was a pretty early with a chainsaw. Anyway. Got that done and then uh, put it away, cleaned the tools up. And uh, give a walk on. You want to get down that way? You want to go this way? And then uh, <clears throat> I always say, I always take a cool down lap after I've. What are you doing? After I've been working for a while just to uh, blow the dust off me, the wood chips. So I took the. Uh, Scrambler XP for a ride. Come on, come on, let's go. There's nothing down there. <clears throat> come on, come on. <clears throat> We're over at my brother Tom's place. And then, uh, got down to see Kevin and Sandy. Come on, come on. Let's go, bud. Come on, let's go. <clears throat> Len, come on, what are you doing? Anyway. They had rented a, uh, a chipper. I rolled up on their driveway and a huge chipper. And uh, Kevin came over and told me that uh, it doesn't work. They, uh, they rented it from the place in Lincoln, across from the post office. And uh, the guy delivered it and had a dead battery. And uh, the guy said normally he checks it out before he tows it up, but uh, I think somebody had just returned it, so he assumed it was in working order. <coughs> All right. But it wasn't. They tried jumping it with the jumper cables. But the engine wouldn't turn over because the uh, cutting blade, the previous person who used it, left a bunch of debris in the, uh, the area where it cuts and it uh, seized up the, the wheel so the wheel wouldn't even turn, couldn't turn by hand. And he was uh, pry more. So the guy had gone back to town. Getting the battery. Uh, he came back and we told him that the wheel wouldn't turn, so uh, he took a crowbar and started prying on the, uh, the wheel. <coughs> Finally cleared all the debris. So, Kevin said he lost probably three hours 
my tripping time. They didn't say how much it cost to rent it. I was going to come up and uh, cut that last piece of rock maple up, but the uh, that chipping and cutting just uh, wore me out. So it'll be for another day, but not today. Road's still wet. <coughs> Should have dried out yesterday with all the sun we had. <coughs> but still mud. So <clears throat> on the way back, Kevin Sandys with the uh, scramble, I opened it up a little bit, got up to 40 miles an hour, and that's uh, too fast. <laughs> She's still had a long way to go, but uh, the wind going around my glasses had my eyes watering. And even though it was, oh, mid-50s, maybe 60, I had a denim jacket on and gloves, and it was getting chilly. So, I backed it down to 25 miles an hour. <coughs> I put that away. And, uh... Drove the side by side over the house because I figured Rita might want her for a ride. And uh, had a drink of water. And then we went for a ride, we went over to uh, Tom's place again. Took some pictures of his deck. Then uh, went over to uh, Bass Geek and Stream. And up to the windmills. Turned around the first windmill. Wind turbine, whatever it is, those guys over there. And uh, made our way back. <coughs> I saw Eli's truck over at his place. Looked like he had a big oil drum. On, uh, on his trailer. <clears throat> I don't know why he would need an oil drum. He's got a uh, propane heater. Got solar.
So I'm still up in the air as to whether we take Flynn down to Brewer. I hate leaving him home for four or five hours. But I hate having him sit in the truck. I don't know whether it's going to be in a sunny area. <clears throat> I don't want to cook it in the truck for freezing. Probably <clears throat> <clears throat> swing into uh, Sam's Club while we're down near Br Bangor. They got uh, five dollar rotisserie chickens. I don't know how they could sell a chicken, a cooked chicken, for five bucks that they do. And uh, we had picked one up last time we were down there. We had a chicken dinner with rice, had chicken sandwiches. And uh, last night we had chicken fajitas. And uh, fortunately, I did not overeat. I had two huge fajitas. I was going to go for a third, but I uh, stopped. <laughs> somebody, uh, somebody collected that metal plate that I popped up here. Huh? Should have taken it myself. There you go, buddy. Taking care of business. Pop and turn overdrive. Uh, for those of you watching this that don't understand Bach and turn overdrive, you have to uh, use Google and search. For uh, music of the 60s and 70s. <clears throat> Come on, buddy, let's go. More uh, diarrhea scat. <clears throat> Some critter's got a problem. <clears throat> well, on the way over to Sandy's and Kevin's yesterday, a uh, partridge ran across the road in front of me. Well, they didn't run, they walked. She walked because it was a female. And then, uh, <clears throat> when Rita and I were taking our ride with the side by side, I almost hit one. It was up there by uh, Ted's driveway. Coming down the hill a little bit, and Rita, Rita quickly gestured out and said, Kraus. And uh, <clears throat> I think it was walking and running, and as it got close, it stopped flying, and almost, almost hit the windshield. It wasn't flying towards me, it was flying away. But by the time he started to take off, <clears throat> I had been moving like 20 miles an hour. <clears throat> by the time he got up to speed, I had almost hit him. And then he disappeared into the... Excuse me. He disappeared into the woods on the east side. And then, uh, when we were finishing our ride, I went down our, what we call our north driveway, 
and uh, there was another male partridge grouse, whatever you want to call them. Rita spotted them, so she spotted two. He was uh, just walking along in the woods. He didn't fly, he just kept walking. Good sized birds. The female was small, but we're five months away from hunting season. October. So hopefully we hear some thumping from the males, as they call the females. Cremating. <coughs> some big worms. He's still going too. Oh, you see that? He's not gonna make it. Come on, come on. <coughs> Soon. Yeah, five months of hunting season. When I was tripping yesterday, going back to tripping, uh, Jim stopped by. We tried for a bit. He said that uh, Larry's dogs had gotten loose. Larry has two coon hounds. And uh, he has an electric fence electric radio control fence I think so that the dogs don't go past the perimeter but apparently the batteries and the colors were dead and the dogs got loose so <clears throat> I thought Larry's dogs were gone uh, he used to have three and one of them got loose I think two years ago or 18 months ago, and a bear killed it. <laughs> and that one's got dirty feet. Had to walk through the uh, the field as right as some moisture on his feet to to clean them off. <clears throat> so breakfast and shower and hit the road. What is it, bud? You see some dirt disturbed on top of the uh, pile of dirt. That's uh, my side by side. I intentionally drove on top of the the high side of the dirt. To spread it out and get it flattened down. Come on, bud. <clears throat> the uh, fender extensions on the scrambler work good, although they uh, they move a little bit. Oh, we got two hairs here. When you hit a bump, there's some some movement because there's no support. So I'm thinking of. Uh, I know my blazers had little metal rods. Yeah, we go from uh, 
a frame area to uh, the fender just to add rigidity. So I'm thinking maybe I get some of those. <coughs> what do you think, bud? Go have breakfast? Leave these, leave these guys alone? Then, no, come on. I don't know why that one's still a lighter brown. But come on, what are you doing? There he goes. It just reminded me last evening when we went for a walk. I didn't have a good tight hold on, not not a tight hold on him, but I had the leaf flopping like that. And uh, he saw sort of a hair and took off. And uh, that kinetic energy that he was able to build up ganked me to the ground. <clears throat> he weighs 75 pounds, but when he gets a running start, uh, he was able to uh, knock me off balance. <clears throat> A little bit of a little bit of a breeze. <clears throat> Run this way. Good boy. Yeah, buds. grass in his fenced in area. It's gonna need to get cut soon. I can't believe it. Well well Rita and I were over there heading towards the uh, wind turbines. There were uh, two or three areas that still had piles of snow. I couldn't believe it on April 28th there's still piles of snow. But yep yeah, here one day we get piles of snow, and the next day I'm talking about cutting the grass. <clears throat> this has this tree here has some nice yellow apples, and she's got buds. Yep. Come, bud. Fun. Let's see if the peach tree has any buds. Yeah, it looks like it does. Yep. The pear tree down there. There's one, there's three pear trees down there, but one that has some noticeable buds. <coughs> and that's going to be it for today. Oh, you look over there. It's supposed to be a moose. Uh, like a basket of flowers. But the antlers had broken a bit. They're inside the bee. 
glued back together again. And if you notice the uh, high track mats, I packed them up yesterday. They're away for the uh, this summer, so had to do something with this deck. This is what it looked like originally. That was nice, but this is all weathered. So that's it. Thanks for watching.